Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas with Aiba Communications, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the latest entrant in the field of iOS multi camera live streaming mobile solutions. All right, I am actually using Cinemaker. Uh, tap. I am actually using Cinemaker to make this video. Uh, I'm actually using two different tools and I'm going to compare them a little bit, but this is really a video about Cinemaker, the latest entrant into the iOS multi camera recording and streaming tools. Uh, let's see, I take tap that. There's my name, Anthony Barogas, and I am using Cinemaker right here on the table and I can show you this view right here. So I'm actually tapping the show live. There's my three camera views. And interestingly, the view you saw over here is not an iPhone, it's an iOS device. Uh, this is an iOS capture device here and I'm using um, a phone to bring in the audio into this system. And at the same time, I'm also recording this whole thing on Teradek Live Air Action, which is the closest competitor. Both of these have the same basic features. Multi-camera live switching on an iPad. It's recorded on an iPad. But the key thing that these two have that other devices don't have, like or other solutions don't have, like Switcher Studio, is the fact that you can bring in, like right here, this is a camcorder. This is a full-on, big, fat camcorder. In fact, I will take this camera here and tap this up here and bring it over. And I will show you, this is the camera that I am talking into right here. Hello. <laughs> so um, this is the camera that is coming into an interface box on the network and that's yeah all the all the all the devices on live air action are wireless so you're going to get some dropout so that's the device that's coming in over there and transition that back and that's coming in via a uh how do i do this do, 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 do. why am i not oh i am switching i am over here it gets kind of confusing when you get two different things going on and lots of things lots of stuff with this, you have a real zoom. So if I reach out here, I can zoom in and realize that I'm not in focus. And then zoom back out. So you can see this is a real camcorder. I can adjust the focus. I can adjust. Uh, okay, fine. I'll just demonstrate the focus. So if I zoom all the way in, I can be focused on me. Or I can rack the focus to the back. I can rack the focus back to me. And then I can zoom out. And here you can see the two cameras that are looking over my shoulder. One of them is going to live air action and one of them is going to Cinemaker. That's how this works. So switch back to, this is a camera on the desk. I can show you that right here. This is this little camera right here. And back to this little camera. So let me take my name out. I'm doing the titles live. I'm doing the overlays live. I actually did the video, uh, video playback live in Cinemaker for this introduction. Now, the really neat thing about Cinemaker that I find is it's not just for production and streaming. It has a built-in editor. And I'm going to use, I'm going to jump into the, well, I'd have to stop the stream. Yeah, let's stop it anyway. I'm going to stop the stream and then I'm going to show you the editor. This is one of the key features of Cinemaker. So I'm switching this live between the different cameras. And right now I'm going to stop it. Stop. Do you want to stop editing? Stop. I'm going to stop editing. Stop. Now it's creating a video project, uh, and right now I'm going to talk to, I'm going to talk to the live air action. It's creating a video project, and let's go to the, and I'm going to say go to the live editor, and when I go to the live editor, the Cinemaker interface becomes a video editing software complete with all of the different camera views that I was using the entire time. So if I have four different things going on, it's gonna show me four different camera views that I can change my switches. I can re-punch the show. So let's take a quick look at that. So here you can see a project I just made 
And we are back in the live editor. So I can move my playhead to someplace. I can play it. I'm talking about what's going on here, and I'm going to be live switching it. But if I click on Overwrite, now I have the ability to redo the show. So I can, I'm going, and I could just say, you know what, let's go to this one. Let's go to this one. Oh, I'm over here now. So that is how you redo your edit literally seconds after finishing the record. This is at, um, your network browser. So you can see all the different devices you've got going on here. I've got two SEs. I have my remote camera here and the one behind me. And then I've got an i5, which is down here. And this is providing my audio. So you can see you need to use a phone for the audio, but you have an audio level meter on the device and you can plug in whatever audio you want. And it's also showing you the waveform of the audio itself, which is very cool. Also on each of these devices, there's a little help button. And when you click on it, it tells you what all the different pieces are doing. And this helpful interface is found everywhere. So if I come up to here, you can see that I've got my two video cameras, and then this is audio. These are all on. This is my IP camera. Let's turn this one on. Let me go back to here. And this is my interface. So you can see very easily that I can easily control my different pieces. Over here, I have the video title. If I hit play on this, it'll just start playing. Stop. I have, uh, if I hit the sound, I can adjust the audio level of the, the clip. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you the audio level. Whoop, go away. It doesn't show you the audio. So if you go into here, you're not able to see it. So it's playing, but I have no idea how loud it is. So you have to listen to them, and then you're not really getting like a... a, a audio level meter level, you're just kind of getting maybe a listening level. So stop that. Here is my picture in picture. And if you call that up, you can then move it around. You can resize it like this. So that's really cool. Uh, let's put it back down in the corner where it was. Do, 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 save. This is my title with titles. Let's call that up. So you can type in the text you want. And then with the keyboard away, you can then say the size, you can dial in the size you want, make it a little smaller. You can dial in the color, It'll give you some basic ones. And then of course you can dial in whatever color you want here. And then you can add it to the swatches. So if you have a very specific company color you need to match, you can do that right here. Put the color away and rotate. Not that I really want to rotate it upside down, but you can do that if you want to. And those are some of the features you've got there. Save. <clears throat> now, uh, then I just put that back up. That's me. And over here, you have the Cinemaker logo. Again, that's just a picture in picture. Uh, some of the other things you can add here text, image, picture in picture. Uh, you can add a movie, and then you can create a group of things, which is also very nice. Over here, this lets you, this is actually a very creative tool in that you can move, change the, the, where they're positioned, which one's on top. So, when I play my video, it goes over top of my lower thirds, which are on top of the video, obviously. But I'm not stuck with having my graphics, like if I bring my graphic up, let's turn this off. If I bring my graphic up and I'm talking to you and then I go to the logo, I'm not stuck with my logo information over top of my graphic, which is not what I want. And I have to quickly try and turn them off. Eh, that's not a really smart way to do it. The best way to do it would be to say, hey, you know what? My video, when it plays, it's on the absolute top of everything. And then below that are these other pieces. So now I can have me with, oh, let's, turn, let's go back into that layers, so with me with my graphic, my text lower third, and then when I go to my video playback, it's clean. There's nothing else on the screen. That's a really nice feature by creating those layers. Stop. 
unfortunately, one of the problems is when you bring that video graphic in, you can't fade it in, you can't dissolve to it, it doesn't dissolve out. It's on, and when you hit stop, it's off. It's just really quick. Uh, the same with these graphics. I have not found a way to dissolve these on and off either. So, there's that. Uh, next thing over here is you have your camera adjustments. Let's get over here really close. For SE1, which is behind me, there it is. You can see I can control the zoom. Whoa. I control the ISO, make it brighter. Uh, there's also exposure bias and exposure duration. Now, exposure duration is really just shutter. The exposure bias, I don't know what that is. ISO is the other way that the camera phones, there's only two, since there's no actual iris, you have only the ISO and your shutter speed to adjust your exposure. This also gives you exposure bias. I don't know what that is, but it works really well in adjusting the exposure, making things brighter and darker. The flashlight, um, you could just as well call the LED on the device. So that makes it brighter or darker. Focus mode, you can tap it into auto. It's actually in auto, go to manual, and then I can push and pull focus. So I can pull focus really close, and you can see it goes because out of focus. And then I put it back in auto, it'll set itself. White balance is uh, in auto. And down at the bottom is your video bit rate. Right now it's set at best. You can set it at best, better, good, and low. Now the manual says that good and low are good for Wi-Fi connections and better and best are good for Ethernet connections. I find best is about 12 megabits a second. So it's a pretty good uh, data rate for a 1080p program. So we'll collapse that and these are your settings for each of the devices. This is your mixing program. Over here you have your audio settings. You can see right now I have my i5S right here and that is my audio. The SE1 and the SE2 are both turned down to nothing because I don't want to have all these different pieces of audio come in. I just want the one channel of audio. I'm just using the microphone sitting here built in to the phone and I'm using it just like I'm using the microphone built into the iPad over here. Uh, there's no external microphone connected to this and that's actually what's recording the audio for what I'm filming right now. So come back over here. That's how I've got my audio. I find that Cinemaker tends to record things very quietly. So I've got this thing cranked up all the way. I'm not even a foot from the microphone that's on the table. And I've got this thing cranked up all the way. I mean, I should be blowing this thing out, but I'm not. And my SE2 just went to sleep. So when I went to sleep, the assistant has left the app. So it's letting me know what's going on in a real-time basis. And lastly, over here, there's Chroma Key. I wanted to do a quick real test of the Chroma Key. Very basic, I have one little light in front of me right here, shining this way. Uh, it's not the best lit Chroma background, but the test is whether you can indeed have different backgrounds on different cameras and not including anything else. So quick, let's come over here and I cut the camera. So now this is uh, my second camera and it's right here and I have a chroma key behind me which you saw right here. It's just a green screen and I have keyed it over. If I move my fingers really fast you get this little green blur. You get a little green fringing. You could probably <laughs> fix all of this with better lighting and if I wasn't literally you know a, a, a foot from the green screen so this is not the best test of green screening, but this is a test of the fact that I can cut between this camera with one background and this camera with a different background. So you can have different soft focuses between to me, camera one and camera two, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, and you've got different green screens on different cameras going on at the same time. That is pretty amazing. Especially, like I said, when you consider I'm this close, you can see my shadows on the background. So I'm, this is not, like I said, the best lighting. I've got one little light hitting me right in the face. It's not very big, it's only this big. And 
if you were to light the background brighter green, have more distance between the people, and that way you would be able to you would be able to have a better key, more narrow range, you know, less of this fringing, and you really this is a, a really cool functional capability between the cameras being able to cut key like this. Plus, like I've said, it's also, if I go back over here and I add uh, picture in picture, but I can actually do a picture in picture with the chroma key. So that's actually pretty cool too. I've got a chroma key and I can add something else. Now, the other thing I wanted to try was a group. What I've created also is a group so that I can go from um, presets. I can have me with a key and a picture in picture and a graphic and I can quickly just cut to that all at once. It doesn't dissolve, like, the, like I said, the graphics don't dissolve, but being able to cut to me and me, wait, I'll get it right, and me with the green screen. That, you know, the green screen isn't working in the picture in picture, but if you wanted to have a second picture of someone else uh, along with me in front of the green screen, you could do that. I'm sort of limited with my resources right now because they're all green screen, but you could do the graphic. Uh, I get this right, the graphic, and a lower third, and the picture in picture, uh -huh, got that right, and the green screen going on at the same time, and that is a single shot that then I can cut to, uh, and then I have me in the background, and I can cut away. And that is really cool, to be able to have that capability whereby you can quickly pop in all of these other things. There, you can see this is, I've got two different cameras going now, that one, and this one. So I have both of these little cameras going and the green screen is on my main camera and then if I had um, a laptop coming in on HDMI, I could have that over here with the person I'm talking to. That could be this one right here. And then I could have my, you know, the logo. Ugh, I get so confused because it's different on that screen. And you have all this capability that you can have all these different things going on at the same time and they're a touch away and that's all gone. So these are different scenes you can have pre-built and then you just call it up and there it is. So you can have a scene with your graphic and your lower third and the thing. You can even have a video as part of a scene. Go to the video blah, 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 and all that stuff happens. And then you come back and there you are. So um, groups are a very cool functionality within Cinemaker and this dual green screen capability is not to be discounted because doing this, having as many as four ongoing green screens for four cameras, not counting groups and overlays, is a very powerful function. And again, if you replace the cameras with DSLRs, that it's gonna give you a better image. And then if you actually take time to light it, you're gonna have a much better green screen. I don't know which one I'm looking at. This one? This one, yeah. You're gonna have a much better green screen. So. That is a quick look at just the green, the multi-camera green screen functionality in Cinemaker. Background layer, you can have a movie, and this would be really good. Add a video, local storage, and I've got this little movie here with this nice little looping background. It's a seamless loop, so we can call this up. Say done, done. And now I've got this thing. See how it's playing. It's it's blurred. It make a great background. So we're going to expand this. See that? loop video so you can loop the video save it so now when i call up se3 oh play <laughs> helps if i hit play my low threshold needs to come down so this is pretty cool now i'm in the news and i've got this little video background going now of course you can see my fingers are cutting out right here so that is a delta function, there you go, delta function. And you tweak it out, I've got a pretty good, it looks like there's a little dip right there at the end. And watch it, watch it, and I think, yep, there it goes. So there is a little flicker when this thing loops, but hey, I gotta admit, this is pretty slick. Now maybe I wanna take this video background because I get this little flicker there it's only a five second loop and loop it out much longer than that. So I can talk and I'm talking to you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm here on the news. So this looks pretty good. And 
The cool thing is it's a video background on this input, and then when I click to this input, I still have this still background. Video background, looping, and a still background. So again, very interesting functionality. Up here, as you saw, these are my projects that I've been recording on Cinemaker. Let's go back, go to the camera icon. It shows you the different devices. There's my IP camera that I was using a moment before, uh, but because I bounced out and bounced back in, now it thinks I don't have the pro version. So those are the things that you have to deal with when you're on a demo review that you don't necessarily have to deal with when you actually have the paid version. All right, so SE2 is back up. Let's come back over here and look at that. It is just right back up with no problems. That is just a really cool feature, not having to worry, really worry about that. And then of course, like I was talking about before, you have that little help button. You ask to help it, what is all this? And it tells you what each of these things are down here, over here. And we'll turn off the help button. Uh, like I said, with these, these need to be able to fade in. I have not found a way to determine how these work. I do love being able to change the order of them. That's really cool. And then uh, the other thing I really kind of was looking to do, I wanted to preset my settings for this. I want to say, oh, I want to do it to 1080, and I want, I'm used to doing all that before I get into a project. This one, you sort of build your project, set up everything, and then when you go to hit record, then you get a screen that says, well, what resolution do you want it to be at? Well, I want it to be 1080p. I want to record with the live edit. I want to send it to YouTube. I'm not, I don't have anything, any of these things authorized, but you can send them to YouTube, Facebook, and a manual RTMP, like if you want to do like a restream or something like that. Facebook doesn't like it when you send it to, to someone else at the same time, so that's really up to you. I do really like the fact that you can enter the name of the file, which I found to be really, really handy, so that, let me cancel this and go back to my projects. You can see that I actually, uh, okay, aside from that really stupid name there where I was just messing around, you know, this is my Cinemaker demo video. This is my 1080 versus Switcher Studio. This is my 1080 versus um, Teradek. So you're able to name the file that's on, they, they get saved to the iPad. So when you're going to dig it around and send it back out, you've got an actual real name to follow. It's not just, you know, a date of something like, oh, okay, I know when I shot it, but which file is this? It, it's a, being able to name it is actually really, really nice. Um, also, you're telling, it tells you, it gives you data here, like this is four video clips and one audio clip, two, one and zero, one and zero. So it, it gives you lots of information here as well. Let us go back. You can see them all in pictures, like, you know, this is a graphic icon for the setup that I have for this shoot. Go back to my list. One of the things I noticed in the Cinemaker uh, projects tab is that you can rename them, which is very easily when you're done. Uh, gives you the date and time, gives you like sample pictures of the different cameras and your video and audio, but it doesn't tell you how big these files are. It doesn't tell you what the file size is, and it doesn't tell you um, how long it is. So those would be two really good um, times pieces of information to be added to this screen especially if you have a small iPad and you've run out of space and you need to delete something to make room, well, which one do I delete? Like, I've got a couple here, but I have no idea which is the longest one. Like, I know I've finished this, but which of these is the longest one? I could delete one of these, get the most time back, most space, and continue going. Uh, so, using this space over here to give me file size and runtime would be a great benefit. Obviously, if you've got more cameras coming in at 10 megabits a second or five megabits a second, you you know, more cameras does not, does not necessarily mean a lot more space. It all depends upon your bit rate. So this is kind of helpful, but more helpful would be a file size over here to the side. In preferences, we're gonna exit this session just for a second so I can show you the preferences. Exit, I'm leaving. All my connections are lost. And when you come over here to your settings, 
All right, my network ID, you can set it, but all the devices have to be on the same network. My transition type is cross dissolve, but that does not apply to the effects or the video. But here's a nice thing. Save the video to the camera roll and it's on. So basically, when you're done, it's already in the camera roll and ready to export. The other two solutions save the to within the own app and then you have to go through a process of exporting it to the camera roll. This one, just you can forget all about that. Your transition duration, connect your social media accounts, um, camera splash image like when my networked video camcorder goes quiet, this is the image that gets popped in its place. You can set up keyboard shortcuts. So stream one, stream two, stream three, uh, settings, you know, you can go through underlay one, underlay two, underlay you. So you can set all of these in for a Bluetooth keyboard connected to the iPad. Uh, Switcher Studio also has a Bluetooth keyboard capability, but just for cutting between cameras, none of the overlays or anything else. In advanced settings, which I really don't play with, uh, the video bit rate, this is the default. And since I'm on Ethernet, you know, I set them up like that. Uh, YouTube privacy, you can set up your YouTube, YouTube latency, normal, ultra low, it can actually be, you know, just a few seconds, but you have to set that. And your Facebook privacy is in here as well. So these are settings you're not going to change very often. I would like to see how the AirPlay uh, works as well, but I have not delved into that. So... Cinemaker stores my project, so if I want to reload this one, I could just go right back into this one, and my cameras will reload if they're still up, which they are, and there they go. Oh my goodness, did it actually pull? Oh no, okay, so it pulled back up my edit. All right, so let's go back and exit the editor right here, and now it's loading my session. And there it is. And there's my session. There's one camera, it's the over-the-shoulder camera, and here is SE2 automatically. You see how fast they come up. That's just a really nice feature in that the cameras come right back up. Four cameras at 10 megabits a second, you're recording 40 megabits a second to the, to the internal iPad because that gives you the ability to edit your shots later. Also, another feature of Cinemaker and a little bit with Switcher Studio is that you can take your finished project and then you can offload it to Premiere. Um, Cinemaker allows you to offload it to Premiere and Final Cut. Switcher Studio only allows you to output it to Final Cut and I think there's an iOS app. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I haven't delved into the post of all of these things um, as deeply as I could. There's just too many apps and too many features to do everything because I actually have to do work too. But being able to edit quickly on the iPad is super handy, it is super slick. Being able to then, if you really wanted to finesse it, take it and put it into Final Cut or Premiere and they have import modules to bring all your content into Premiere and really finesse what you've done, that is super slick too. And that it's not to be, you know, you know, discounted when you're looking at these things. If you are looking at just streaming, however, um, you need to really look at the polish of the product that you have. You know, 10 megabits a second is great. The fact that it's going to push to those uh, different locations is great. Um, but I would like to see uh, better lower third templates other than just text. You can bring them in. You can key them. Uh, you could uh, have all these things ready made. Or you can have like a fancy background and put text over top of it and then group it. That's just extra work. I, I, I really think if you're going to have a title template, the title template should have the text in it with a background. It just makes it a lot easier. Both Teradek Live Air and Switcher Studio have these. Switcher Studios are actually animated, so when they come on, they actually build on, which is really nice polished in terms of delivering a finished product with the iPad itself to a stream to the web. Um, Cinemaker is... A nice program and it gives you full 1080 and it gives you 10 megabits a second and it gives you that edit capability and the ability to have your camera show up like that and the ability to bring in a big camcorder like I like I did and the ability to do a different chroma key on every input and the ability 
to adjust the various settings for your iOS cameras. I, all these are fantastic features. Plus, another thing is the folks at Cinemaker have already put together packages of solutions. So, you know, get your phones, get your iPad, and you download the app and you sign up, but you need all that interconnect as well. And they have um, supports, they have um, adapters, they have power over Ethernet, and like the hardware I was using on the Cinemaker side is all available on their website. So if you have nothing and you want to get up to speed very quickly, it's nice to be able to sit there and have uh, a vendor say, use this hub, use these adapters with these cables, and you're good because this is what we use, this is what we've tested, we know this stuff works. And that's a really nice feature because I have to be honest, a lot of the time I spend with Teradek Live Air and with Switcher Studio is testing out a wireless router, testing out various audio solutions and making sure that they work like I want them to work. I am that tester, whereas if you have the vendor go through and they have an approved list of products, that gets you up to speed a lot faster and you're kind of assured that this stuff has been thought through and the stuff that doesn't work has already been weeded out. That's a really nice feature as well. So this has been a quick look at Cinemaker. And wait, I can put the logo up there, bam. So this has been a quick look at Cinemaker. My name is Anthony Barogas, and I hope this has proven useful to you to take a quick look at the latest tool for mobile iOS-based video, multi-camera, live streaming, recording, editing, content creators. Thanks for watching.